One should note that simply because an adaptation changes features about the original does not necessarily make it a bad adaptation. An adaptation should be creative. It should demonstrate some degree of curiosity. It should demonstrate a sense of intrigue and wonderment, a sense to reinterpret and reinvestigate the ideas of the show that it's adapting. The question, of course, is whether these changes are worthwhile or not. Whether they add to the show, whether they at least demonstrate a clear and concise understanding of it, or whether they detract from it. <clears throat> On the issue of Azula in the Netflix adaptation of Avatar, there are arguments to be made both ways. One can argue that this is a bold and daring recontextualization of the character that she is brought down to earth so to speak <clears throat> that she's not this devilish inhumanly conniving vindictive person who believes it is her right to dominate and control others and believes that she is serving her country, serving her father, and serving impulses within herself that she considers right and proper to indulge. The Netflix adaptation transforms her into an anxious and quite conflicted teenager. She is much more viscerally adolescent in this version. Elizabeth Yu gives a solid performance, infusing the character with both a haughty, snobby arrogance and pretentiousness, and this underlying sense of dread and anxiety. She wants to be the heir. She believes it is her right. She believes that by any correct and thoughtful value judgment, she sh should be the leader of the Fire Nation after Ozai. But she fundamentally is uncertain as to whether Ozai shares that judgment. Is this bold? Is this daring and incisive? Does it make Azula a more complicated and more interesting character? By making her into a more relatable and relatively speaking normal person instead of this agent of terror and imperious devastation or does it undermine the character? Does it make her somewhat less special? In making her normal, does it fundamentally undercut the basic appeal of Azula as a character? I will give the case for Azula in this version and then demonstrate why I think this version of Azula, despite real merits, might run into some problems in the last season of the show if the show does in fact continue until season three, which it looks like it will since it has been renewed for all three seasons. It's important to note that the Netflix adaptation of Avatar was never going to be able to completely copy certain elements of the original. Some things just don't translate well from the 
medium of animation to live action. Now one could say that's a reason why it's not necessarily a good idea to try to adapt a show like this to live action in the first place, but that is a larger discussion than simply one pertaining to this specific show. Taking for granted that yes, the show is going to be adapted and there is value in that, certain elements are going to need to be changed, such as Azula. Azula in the original is not voiced by an actual teenager. I think most people can discern this simply by watching the show. She has this husky, almost disquietingly seductive voice and presentation both alluring and venomous that is extremely s strange and a bit disquieting considering that she is Zuko's younger sister and she is only 14 years old in the original Many people I know who watched the original did not think that she was his younger sister. Certainly not until Zuko alone, but some people who weren't looking closely enough didn't even know then, and that's perhaps understandable because she doesn't act like his younger sister. She doesn't act like a child at all. She sees herself as innately superior to those around her, and she sees her desire to dominate and control others as being number one, necessary to maintain her power, and number two, simply normal and perfectly sensible since she is innately superior to everyone else. This domineering, almost godlike belief in her own superiority is most clear when she confronts Long Fang at the end of season two they are working together to take control of the city, Ba Sing Se, and he attempts to betray her. But the Dai Li, his agents, ultimately side with her. Why? Azula's speech is rather absolutist in its self-aggrandizing, ego-stroking. But there is some truth in it, at least in regards to how Azula sees herself and how that absolute, unwavering belief in her own superiority has an effect on those around her. Long Fang does not take victory for granted. He's a conniver. He loves keeping himself in the shadows while conceiving of plans and plots to increase his authority, to take control of the city, to hold it with an iron grip because he believes that is the only way to protect its stability and harmony, but also because he's simply power hungry. He wants that control for himself. He enjoys it. And yet, he fundamentally views that control as tenuous. It's something he needs to keep fighting for. 
He's always thinking of new, clever ploys, such as when he kidnaps Appa. He doesn't necessarily need to do this. He still has a relatively strong position vis-a-vis -vis Team Avatar, even if he doesn't. But by kidnapping Appa, he seeks to increase his own bargaining power. That's who he is. He always views his position as somewhat tenuous. Azula doesn't. For Azula, she should rule because she is a person of innately higher caliber. She explicitly refers to herself as having the divine right to rule. She never questions herself. Her belief in her own superiority is unshakable. She takes over the city for the benefit of the Fire Nation. She tracks down the Avatar and her brother too. Not because she absolutely has to to restore her honor, as Zuko calls it, restore her position, restore her relationship with her father, restore her good standing in society. And she doesn't necessarily do it because she has anything to materially gain from it either. She wants the glory, sure. But more than anything, she does it because she believes it's her right. She believes it's what one does when they have the power and the cunning that she does. They use it for their own benefit. Anything else would be disgraceful. She's the kind of person who would read Machiavelli or Nietzsche and come away thinking that their ideas confirm her basic moral worldview. That is not particularly true. Machiavelli, whatever one might say of him, genuinely believed in a world free from the dictates of bloodthirsty and unjust rulers. He wanted to create stable and lasting governments that were flexible and adaptable to the changes and discussions that the people might have. He's not an apologist for tyrants. Nietzsche, as well, whatever his more negative qualities, does not believe in the right to oppress and control others. Even in the least generous interpretation of the will to power, it is not the will to enforce your authority on the individuality of others. This is exactly what Nietzsche is against. He seeks the liberation of the individual consciousness from the unthinking acquiescence to the norms and mores of a sickly and enervated society that fundamentally cause the individual to despise themselves, to distrust themselves, instead of actively embracing their curiosity, their creativity, their inventiveness, and seeing the world for themselves, instead of in reference to the dogmatic moral dictates of others. Azula doesn't care about any of this. Even if I explained all this to her, she wouldn't care. She has her fundamental worldview and nothing, nothing at all can shake it. This Azula in the remake is not like that. She is constantly riddled with doubts. She sends and receives messages from Zhao 
working to advance his interests in the hope that he can help her. This is not something that the original Azula would have done. She would have considered it beneath her. She would have considered it completely unnecessary. But Netflix Azula is much more uncertain. She is not completely sure that her brother is that much of an exile, that Ozai really does prefer her. In the original, this is not under debate at all, even before Zuko is banished. Azula, in the original, can create lightning because she does have that absolute purity of conviction. Or is this Azula? She's much more b bothered by the judgments of others. She has a deeper desire to prove herself. She's much more like Zuko. This is not innately bad, and it's an interesting choice. It's a more grounded choice. She seems more like a real person with dreads and aspirations instead of this unquestioning force of pure cunning and malice that she has especially in the first few seasons of the original. But I do wonder if it'll make the transition to her eventual breakdown less impactful. We get glimpses of Azula's hidden dissatisfactions in the beach in the original. It's the episode that really allows us to understand Azula as a human being. And yet, that episode more than anything reveals the fragility of her own pose, of the facade she projects and genuinely believes of herself as this perfect, flawless cunning, brilliant, dominant figure. She fundamentally has a hard time connecting with people, and when her connections fail, when her friends leave her, she does not have any ideology, any uh, moral worldviews to fall back upon. Her one basic idea that she is right and just and dominating others and that that is the only safe path to certainty and control and order it disintegrates and she has nothing so she flips from being extremely calm and composed to being completely crazed and her mind is fractured and fragmented I hope that the Netflix Azula is able to be that different as well when she finally breaks down, that there is that much of a drastic change from who she is at the start of the show, but I'm not quite sure because she is so much more normal, so much more reasonable almost in the Netflix version. But anyway, thank y'all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can. If you want to see more videos like this, tune in soon for the next analysis. We'll be coming soon. Thank y'all again. Adios, comrades.